as of now. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is Peter Denoy. I am president of the Rotary E Club of Canada One, and I welcome you to our monthly fellowship assembly. Exciting uh, evening game because we have a classification talk, we have a Paul Harris fellow presentation, and we will hear about the district conference that one of our members will be uh, heading, being uh, the district governor in 2020 2021. So first, uh, we'd like to do uh, the introductions, and I am going to, uh, to ask, as the list is here, as I see it, for people to introduce themselves. Janet Steed, please. Hi, Janet Stead. Rot uh, Stead. I was going to say Rotary Club of Wachego. Oh, my goodness. Uh, <laughs> I'm in Georgian Bay, Ontario. Okay. And I'm a transfer E, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Janet. Simon. Simon Boersma is uh, our area governor. Simon, can you introduce yourself a bit more? Yeah, my name is Simon Boersma. I'm part of the Rotary Club of Mournville, and I uh, carry a, a quite a big area. Uh, we have Slave Lake, Westlock, um, Athabasca, and um, what did I miss? Lac uh, Barhead. No, Lac No, Lac <laughs> Not Lac Labiche, luckily. <laughs> Thank Luckily, you. listen, I practiced there for five years. It's okay. <laughs> I get there. Don't worry. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Ellie, Ellie Contreras. Because Jocelyn is there. My name is Ellie Contreras. I'm a charter member of this club. And um, I live in beautiful Osoyoos. Osoyoos, it's called. Right. Osoyos. Victoria, can you... Victoria, can you introduce yourself? <laughs> um, I'm uh, Vicki Grab. I'm the uh, chair of the annual fund committee of the, the district. And I'm here this evening to make a Paul Harris presentation, which gives me great pleasure. Awesome. Thank you I belong so much. to the Rotary Club of Edmonton West. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we really appreciate that. Tammy. Hi, everybody. I'm from Red Deer, Alberta. Well, that's where I live. I'm from PEI. So I've uh, been part of the e-club for a few years and currently the secretary. Thank you very much, Tammy. John Kay. Hi. Um, I am a can bad you? boy. <laughs> Can we can hear you. Can hear me? Yeah. Yep. yep. I think he's frozen. Well, no, yeah, I know, but he's not you that you bad. You can hear me, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Go ahead, John. Um, I am pleased to be uh, back on uh, on a meeting with uh, my fellow E Club members. Um, I am actually over the border in Blaine, Washington, but I can see Canada from where I live. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. Kitty. Hi, everyone. I'm Kitty Butchko, and uh, I'm an associate member of the club, enjoying the club, and I am in Sarnia, Ontario. All right. Jim Yukon. Jim Yukon. Uh, uh, I'm up in Whitehorse. Uh, as a background, I've been involved in Rotary for 21 years and a refugee from 5010 and uh, Whitehorse. Uh, for Janet, I practiced in Mount Forest in the Owen Sound area, so I know that quite well. But in full disclosure, I'm originally from Boston. Yeah, we won't hold any of those things against you <laughs> anymore. <laughs> anyway. And I, and I actually admit it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jim. Thank you. And uh, Jim Ferguson. And who else is there? And my lovely wife, Jocelyn. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Jim Ferguson. I'm the uh, a past president of the Rotary Club of Canada One. And I'm also a charter member like Ellie. Um, and this is my wife. Hi, I'm Jocelyn Ferguson. I'm a member of the Athabasca Rotary Club. And I am on the executive committee as director at, uh, at large. Awesome. Thank you. And thank you 
both for coming. Judy Brown. Hi, I'm Judy. I live at Pigeon Lake, Alberta, and I've been a member of the Rotary E-Club one since November. I'm a director on the board, and I transferred here from the Edmonton Riverview Rotary Club. For, All right. I was a member for 30 years, just about. Yeah, Judy, make sure you say E-Club of Canada one, because otherwise we think you're a member of that American club. <laughs> that was the first in the world, as a matter of fact. Uh, Barry. Yeah, Barry Maskell from, uh, I'm a member of the Whistler Rotary Club. Uh, we have an off day today. Our normal meeting is at seven o'clock in the morning, but we're starting to change things around a bit. Uh, we have a couple of evening meetings uh, during the month now and usually one day off. So today is a day off and here I am. Good. Awesome. Welcome. Bryce Lambert, who's muted. Oh, this is sorry. our AV man. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Hello, uh, Bryce Lambert, uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Rotary Club, uh, Canada One. Uh, member since, uh, oh boy, I got to go back and remember when I became a member here. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. Okay. Thank you all for coming, uh, for uh, introducing yourself and uh, hope you enjoyed the meeting. I will uh, pass the floor to, uh, to Jim, I think, who will uh, proceed with uh, the introduction of Victoria and then we'll go to the uh, uh, Paul Harris presentation, fellow presentation. Jim? Okay, thanks, Peter. Uh, it's a big honor tonight to have John Kay here and have uh, Victoria here as well. Uh, John Kay is being presented with his very first Paul Harris Award. Uh, and as we know, a Paul Harris is when you contribute a thousand dollars US uh, to the Rotary Foundation. So it's, it's a big moment. I know uh, a lot of us here are Paul Harris fellows and it's uh, it's an honor to have John here and to have uh, Vicki or Victoria prevent, present the uh, Paul Harris Award. So I just wanted to introduce Victoria. Um, Vicki's been a Rotarian since 2004. After moving to St. Albert, she joined the Rotary Club of St. Albert initially and now has transferred to the Rotary Club of Edmonton West. Vicki was a foundation director for the Rotary Club of West Shore in Victoria for about eight years. She was a foundation area coordinator in Greater Victoria and then a member of the District 5020 Foundation Committee. She is now a member of the District 5370 Foundation Committee and chair of the annual fund sub subcommittee. Vicki is a passionate supporter of the Rotary Foundation and is a member of the Paul Harris Society. Committed to contributing $1,000 US each year to the Rotary Foundation. So Vicki, if you can go ahead. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, it's really a great pleasure for me to make this presentation because I believe so strongly in the foundation and uh, people uh, achieving a Paul Harris by con contributing to it. Paul Harris once said that perhaps dreaming is not so bad if one dreams good dreams and makes them come true. In Rotary, we make dreams a reality through extraordinary projects and activities here at home and around the world. These projects would not be possible without the generous support of Rotarians and friends of our foundation. The Rotary Foundation recognizes those individuals who contribute to the annual fund, uh, Polio Plus or approved foundation grants by awarding a Paul Harris pin. Today we honor a dedicated friend of our Rotary Foundation whose generosity distinguishes him as a Paul Harris recipient. These generous gifts enable Rotary's worldwide network of dedicated humanitarians to implement projects that address pressing needs in communities around the world. Because of these contributions, children are vaccinated against polio and other diseases. 
adults and children alike can learn to read and write. And I, I see that the certificate is being held up so you can see it. Women are given microloans and vocational training that enable them to support themselves in their, and their families in a healthy and dignified way. Teachers and school children have access to toilet facilities and clean drinking water. Scholars are able to study ways to prevent maternal and child mortality. And professionals from around the world convene to discuss strategies for resolving conflict and fostering peace. Today we recognize John Kay for enabling Rotary to make an impact on individuals, families, and entire communities. On their behalf, I offer our sincere appreciation for your ongoing generosity. And now I virtually present to you your Paul Harris pin. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for John Kay. And there's the pin. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm very honored. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Uh, Thank you. Jim, and thanks very much, Victoria, for doing that. I hope you have enough ear to stick around and uh, enjoy the rest of our meeting as well. And, I have uh, other obligations, but thank you. <laughs> Too bad. Thank you. I, I might be Coming. on screen for a while while I figure out how Good. to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. Thanks, Victoria. Bye bye. And uh, like to uh, give the floor to Ellie, uh, who will introduce uh, Janet for her classification talk. Thank you, Peter. Uh, born in, in Toronto, Janet was raised in uh, Ontario's cottage country, just north of Aurelia. She attended McMaster's after university, where she studied languages and philosophy. Uh, she was an au pair, au pair in France for six months. She must be speaking France, French. When she turned to Canada, she completed the three-year computer programmer analyst program at Georgian College in Barrie. Upon graduation in 1990, Janet started up her own corporate software training company, CTC Computer Training and Consulting, which she still manages today. Janet and her husband, Dan, were charter members of the Rotary Club of Vachago and Area, Centennial, found on Rotary's 100th anniversary, February 23rd, 2005. For almost 20 years, uh, Janet and Dan have been renting a cottage on the shores of Woods Bay, part of Georgian Bay. On their frequent boat rides, they would pass an island cottage that Janet fell in love with. In August 2017, they bought Dry Island. And as Dan would say, happy wife, happy life. So they moved there full time in April of 2018. They lived there from April, when there's no ice on the lake, <laughs> until November and spent their winters in Trinidad, Cuba. Please welcome Janet Stead and her classification talk. Janet, you have uh, muted yourself still. Well, I can't say mierda because Ellie will understand that. Okay, um, so uh, I, I've created a video for my classification talk. Uh, it's exactly what I would have said and shown you with PowerPoint, but this way I don't have to worry about the slides being behind me because of a lag in the internet, hopefully. Um, and I'm learning a new program called Camtasia for doing online videos. So you guys are my guinea pigs. So let's uh, see how this goes. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. I was born in Weston, Ontario on January 27th, 1962, which makes me 57 years old. I lived in Toronto till about the age of 10. My parents started building a cottage just north of Aurelia and not having a lot of money but wanting to live in cottage country, we ended up moving up into the cottage. 
Like a shoemaker that never has shoes, I ended up living in an unfinished cottage for most of my teen life. I, after high school, I went to McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario to study languages. I absolutely loved French, but I wasn't able to grasp it very well. I wasn't very good at it. So my professor recommended that I move to France and become an au pair, which I did. Uh, after my second year of university, I ended up applying for a job in France. I got it, and I ended up moving in with a family of uh, three, three young girls, Gail, Kiki, and Estelle. And there they are when I looked after them, and there they are just a few years ago. We have remained good friends. Uh, in fact, I was with uh, some of them in Cuba in December. When I got back from France, um, I decided to not continue with my French studies simply because generally, if you're going to be studying uh, languages or particularly one language like French, uh, it's because you want to be an, either an interpreter or a teacher. And I wasn't good enough to be an interpreter. And I decided I didn't want to be a teacher because I didn't want to work with children all day. So my mom, uh, said to me, I think you should be a plumber. And I said to her, I can't, Mom. I wear rubber gloves for doing dishes. I can't, there's no way I'm going to put my hand in a toilet. So being a plumber was out of the question. And so she said, well, then I think you should get into computers because I think they're going to be big. This was back in 1986. I took her advice. I enrolled in college a three-year program and graduated as a computer programmer analyst. Upon graduation, I started my own training company, which I'll get into later. But uh, in my early days of teaching, I met, met Dan, my now my husband, Dan Herbert. He walked into my classroom to take an Excel course one day, and that was it for me. Um, there's no problem with the teacher-student relationship because he's nine years older than I am. We lived in Aurelia for a short time and then we moved to Washego, a small village on the Green River just north of Aurelia. We got married on my 45th birthday and in our living room and the reason why our wedding party is wearing their pajamas and long johns is because as far as they knew we were just having them over for my birthday dinner and they decided to pull a prank on us and show up in their pajamas well it was pretty funny because one of the girls when they knocked on the door and i opened it and i'm wearing a gown and dan's wearing a tuxedo they started laughing and they said ha ha we're in our pajamas because they thought we were pulling a trick on them by getting so dressed up and I leaned into them and I said, ha ha, we're getting married. And the girls were just, they were mortified because they wanted to run home and get changed and I wouldn't let them. I said, get in here, we're getting married. And once the minister performed his duties and left, Dan and I changed into our pajamas and I cooked dinner for everyone. We had a great life in Washago. We were known for having a lot of parties especially our hat and wig parties. You couldn't get in the door unless you were wearing a hat, a wig, or both. Um, in fact, we had so many of these parties that my sister, who's a real estate agent, was driving some people around Washago one day to look at houses, and they drove past my house. My sister didn't say it was, tell them it was mine. And as they went by the house, the woman pointed to it and said to my sister, you know, they're swingers. And my sister had a hard time keeping a straight face when she asked them to clarify. And apparently that's what the neighbors thought because of all the parties that we had. So we got a good chuckle out of that. Dan introduced me to Woods Bay. And it's a place where he's, he'd been coming for 30 years, uh, renting a cottage there for two weeks every summer. Well, once I got a taste of it, Two weeks wasn't enough, and so I kept adding a week on each summer, and we got up to the point where we were up to 12 weeks, and we passed this place called Dry Island. 
a small island with a house on it and a shop and a bunkie and I just loved it. I fell in love with it. It had a front a screen porch that ran down the front of it and it was for sale from time to time. We talked about it and decided that we wanted to live here. So one Monday, we had no plans. We were just literally planning on packing up from this rental cottage to go home for the fall. And the following Monday, we owned a small island. And we're extremely happy here. Our kids and our grandkids absolutely love it up here. And so we get to see them way more than we used to. And we have kind of turned into hermits ourselves. Um, really not wanting to leave the island unless we absolutely have to. Dan owns a company called Credit Bureau Collections. He's the president and our son is going to be taking over the company. So Dan is retired. I am still running my company as long as I've got an internet connection that works out fine. And we do have a great internet connection. During our first year, we had a builder come in and build me an office right next door to the house, which is terrific because my commute is only 12 steps. So now we live on Dry Island from April to December and then in Cuba from uh, December to March. Our area of choice is Trinidad, Cuba. We've been going to the same resort numerous times every winter. Last winter, we stayed there for the whole winter. Um, again, as long as I've got an internet connection, I can work. But, uh, and we have lots of visitors, of course. These are our kids um, and their spouses and our grandkids, Audrey and Elroy. But this coming winter, we will be renting a house in a small fishing village just down the road from Trinidad. Uh, the village is called La Boca. We love to travel. Uh, we've been to 20 odd countries. Um, next, our next trip is going to be probably next spring or summer, and that will be to Iceland, uh, Norway, Finland, Denmark, uh, might be a little bit of Russia, Northern Germany and France to visit some friends. Okay, so that's my personal story. Um, next, my professional life. As I said, I started CTC computer training and consulting upon graduation from college. That was in September of 1990. So this September, that means I'll be celebrating my 29th anniversary. We do corporate Microsoft Office training. One day courses, that's our specialty. Various levels. And we have a classroom in Barrie, Ontario. And where we, um, we, on our website, we publish a schedule of our one day courses and that's where companies can sign their employees up. Although most of our work is on site, we actually go to companies all over the country for our one day courses. And uh, as I mentioned, our specialty is making people much more efficient using Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, and Windows. Um, in fact, I have an email tip list with over 800 people on it and every few weeks I send out a tip with exactly that in mind, um, showing people that have been using these programs for years little tips and tricks that they've been missing out on. I no longer teach. Um, I just manage the bookings for our company. I do the invoicing and I write the manuals. I've written over 70 uh, software training manuals to date. I also am a writer. Uh, I published my first fiction novel called Breach in November of 2017. I'm currently in the middle of book number two, and I have outlines for books three, four, and five on the go. I've also started volunteering to read audiobooks for LibriVox as I'm looking forward to expanding my voice work portfolio. And that's my professional life. And now I'll wrap up with uh, information about my rotary life. Dan and I, and a group of 18 others, chartered the Rotary Club of Washago and Area Centennial on Rotary Centennial, which, uh, February 23rd, 2005. It was a great little club, which sadly has folded in the past year. But um, we had a lot of really successful projects, and we did good things for the community, and we all feel very good about it. As with most small clubs, I held many positions in it, uh, including president. At the district level, I started out as I was the chair of Polio Plus for six years. You, uh, anybody who purchased a NPolio Now 
magnet, car magnet, uh, or I've seen these. That was my project for about four years. Um, and it had a good run. I also took a small group of interactors down from Aurelia down to Colima, Mexico to participate in a Project Amigo Dental Hygiene Work Week, which was a fantastic experience for both the students and myself. And I continue to sponsor a Project Amigo student. Dan and I have been involved with a number of youth initiatives. We have hosted uh, an, international, an ex international exchange student, Anna Bramer, from Germany. Uh, that was about 10 years ago, and since then, uh, we've been to Germany to visit her. She's been here a number of times to visit us. In fact, she's arriving next month for another visit. I am so enamored with the student exchange program that any time I meet a 15 or 16 year old, I can't help but talk to them about it. We also have participated in international student weekends with the University of Toronto in conjunction with the Rotary Club of Aurelia. And that's where we get, uh, we tell the University of Toronto that we have spots for 30 to 40 students. They fill a school bus up and we bring them up for a winter weekend. The idea being that international students arrive in Toronto, uh, many of them not knowing anyone, so they have no way of getting around to explore. And they're, they're basically stuck in Toronto for the winter and they think that's winter in Canada, which, I mean, there's some winters that Toronto doesn't even get snow. So we bring up a busload of the students, we billet them with Rotarians, and we have a weekend at, absolutely packed with winter activities. Everything from uh, snowshoeing, skiing, ice fishing, tubing, uh, taffy pulls in the snow. We get together for a big dinner where every, all of the students get to tell us about their countries. Many of them take it upon themselves to entertain us with song and dance from their countries. We host them in our homes and we get to know them. Many of these students we've had back for other visits. Uh, it, we absolutely love that weekend. In fact, if you were to ask me if there was a downside to living on this island, the only one I can honestly think of is that we're too far away to be involved in that weekend anymore. We also participated in a Rotary Friendship Exchange with District 3011 within Delhi, India. Uh, what a terrific experience that was. Uh, we were hosted by three or four different Rotary families. We got to see all the different Rotary projects they're involved in. We got an up close look at polio and its effects on India and the work that they're doing to help those affected by it. Uh, we got to visit a hospital where a doctor does uh, reconstructive surgeries for polio victims. Um, it was an absolutely fantastic experience. I have attended five Rotary International Conventions. I have been Assistant Governor for Area 4 of District 7010 and I am a Paul Harris Plus 8 Fellow and a Rotary Benefactor. And what inspired me to become a Rotarian? I think the uh, attending the district conferences but I think the Rotary International Convention in San Antonio, Texas was the biggie for me. I, I was so moved by the speakers and all that I saw Rotary doing. I, I literally felt like I was floating on a cloud when I left that convention and I knew that I needed to be a part of that. Hearing has stopped. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Thanks very much, Janet. Do you have well, anything to add to that? If not, I'd like to open it up for questions for Janet. We have a, a few minutes left uh, on the, on our schedule. Anybody? You tell me there's going to be questions. <laughs> we, 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 can, we, can, on this? we can improve anything about your presentation. So oh. Something else. <laughs> Janet, it is fabulous. Uh, uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Hablas Espanol? Uh, yo aprendiendo Espanol. So is, so is Barry. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming to Mexico. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. Also going to the uh, Project Amigo thing for a couple of days at the end of November. You're going to love it. 
Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Any other? Anybody else? Any questions for uh, for Janet? So you know, Janet, like everybody is different, but if I'm stuck on one place and I can only go somewhere, I get the jitters. How do you? You go on your boat often? You go to the mainland, or you on the um, island? Yeah, we. Yeah, um, we have a pontoon boat and we have a tiller boat and we have two jet skis. So we try to mix it up a little bit when we do have to leave. Um, but I. I'm really learning how to plan. I make lists on my phone like you would not believe. Yeah, yeah. And when I leave, I get everything. So my, because my goal is I don't want to leave. And uh, if I can stay for a few, I, I think two weeks is the longest, as much as I want to stay. Um, for some reason, every two weeks, I end up having to go somewhere, even if it's just 20 minutes down the road to the local village. But I'm, I'm working on prolonging that. But by the time I get it down pat, summer will be over and we'll be leaving for Cuba. So, yeah, yeah. sounds great. Sounds okay. like a great I, life. A dream for many people, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful every day. I, I am appreciative for us. We've worked to get here and I'm, I'm very glad we did. So. Janet, when you decide to go for a walk, how long would that be? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know what? We're grooming a trail around the perimeter of the island. The island is two and a half acres, and we have a trail that goes around it. Um, so I would say half a kilometer. Okay. Yeah. So you can do that four times, back and forth yeah. is different. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we have, a, we have a, a large shop in the back. Uh, it's got a sleeping loft in the top, and we have a ping pong table now. So we play ping pong ba pretty much every day. So that's fun Very too. Very good. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Again, thank you so much for doing your classification talk, and it will be on, on YouTube and you know, available for everybody. Janet, please, I need to get that video somehow from you so I don't have to actually download it you I know, will. through this one. So we'll connect yeah. on that later. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Our you. Next, next, I would like to give the floor to, uh, to Jim and Ali. Jim, district governor elect, who will be uh, in charge of the district governance in, uh, in 2020. And Ali, uh, who is the chair of the planning committee uh, for that particular conference. Ellie and Jim, take it away, please. Well, thanks, Peter. <clears throat> I just wanted to acknowledge we have a couple of uh, new people here. Uh, Nosberto Lu is here. Um, he's a member from the Rotary Club of Guatemala, correct, Nosberto? And he's living in Ottawa. You're, You're muted, muted. <laughs> I'm sorry, yes, that's correct. I'm, I'm living in Ottawa, but I uh, belong to the Rotary Club of Guatemala North. Mm -hmm. Well, nice, nice to be with you again. Thank you. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, our district governor nominee, Donna Barrett, is here as well. Hi, Donna. So nice Hi. to see you. I've done up a presentation here. Hopefully it, it works. We'll have a quick look here and let's see. see here. Can everybody see that? There you go. Yep. Okay, good. All right, so welcome everybody. It's uh, Vision 2020 presentation. So the story of the 2020 District 5370 Conference is a story of Rotarians and friends reaching out to help an e-club whose members reside around the world. A little history on it. When I was appointed as District Governor nominee designate, my two main concerns were one, public speaking, and two, the district conference in 2020. So for public speaking, I joined Toastmasters in Athabasca to try to increase confidence and learn speech crafting.
for the district conference, I contacted my friend and ace in the hole, E-Club Charter President and past district governor, Ellie Contreras, to be the main chair of the event. And luckily she agreed. Because I find her vision is excellent. <laughs> From there, we approached Rotarians and friends from our district to help fill key roles for the district conference committee. And for the committees, uh, past district governor Jackie Hobel and Ross Tyson both said that the help for the district conference was there, just ask. So we did. And Rotarians and friends have responded dramatically. So here's a look at our district conference committees. Even though she has a very busy schedule, past district governor Betty Skrepnik stepped into the co-chair role to help out Ellie. E-club member Tammy Waugh is in charge of administration, document filing, correspondence, and archives. Past District Governor Tim Shields, who's a chartered accountant, is the treasurer and head of finance. And that's with the wife, Sally Shields. Longtime e-club friend and helper, Lawrence Green, is the webmaster, who's setting up the district conference website. And that's a picture of uh, Lawrence with Bruce Kleberger in Mesa. E-Club member Sharon Blaker is looking after registration, on-site packages, and name tags, along with District Governor nominee Donna Barrett and Rini Cavanaugh. This is a big area to fill, and Nelson Scott has several people in his corner. Bryce is looking after the promotional video, Nelson is looking after the web content and district newsletter. Uh, Peter is looking after social media. And Peter Denoy is looking after Rotary E-Club promotion. Bryce, E-Club member Bryce Lambert will look after all production sound and video systems, live streaming and Zoom. The promo video will start filming at the end of July and should take about a week to complete. Harry Brown, who we found out is Jocelyn's second cousin, is looking after the venue, meals, snacks, rooms, decorations, etc. We're very glad to have her as she's a whiz in this area having worked on three previous district conferences. My wife, Jocelyn, will be speaking of the Friday night entertainment right after this presentation. And that's a picture with her grandson, little Theo Jackson. Betty's team, <clears throat> excuse me, Betty's team will be arranging transportation, looking after gifts for the speakers, the memorial event, sergeant at arms, protocol, and house of friendship. Ross has contacted and scheduled in speakers that he wanted to see at the district conference and has done a remarkable job. He's in charge of the district conference program, which has actually been completed. We need money, and past district governor Frank Wrights and his team are looking at sponsorships right now. Tamara will be looking after Rotaract, Interact, and Youth Exchange.
And she'll also be planning the uh, youth programs for the district conference and looking at fundraising for the youth component. The volunteer coordinators, Elizabeth and Gary, are looking after recruitment, communication, and orientation for our district conference volunteers. So here's our logo, Vision 2020. So we're having a look at Rotary's past, present, and future with 2020 vision, clear vision. Therefore, Vision 2020. And Ellie designed the logo. I think she did a fantastic job. For the venue, we're having the district conference of Double Tree by Hilton in Edmonton. So we wanted a venue with a hotel as part of the conference center, i.e. no driving around, just take the elevator to your room. Uh, the West End is preferable, close to Stony Plains, Spruce Grove area where Ellie Romero and I had been in the local Rotary clubs, and hopefully we can get some volunteers from those clubs. Uh, we wanted easy access to the International Airport for the traveling e-club members. We checked out venues in Stony Plains, Spruce Grove, River Cree, and Doubletree, and chose a recently renovated Doubletree. For speakers, we have Dr. Mark Joffe, who is, uh, will be talking about the past. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Dr. Mark Joffe will review polio treatments in Alberta from the 1950s and the impact that the disease had on our people. Becky Scott, the present. The gold medal Olympian Becky Scott is the chair of the World Anti-Doping Agency and served as the International Olympic Committee member between 2006 and 2014. And Norma Asensio from Project Amigo. Norma graduated from the Project Amigo program in Colima, Mexico, has studied and graduated as a lawyer and has helped other members of her family get educations to break the cycle of poverty. Valerie Wafer, Rotary International Director-Elect, will be joining us to give us an update on the present and future visions of Rotary. Rotarian Alan Mallory will be speaking about the extreme challenges both he and his family endured while attempting to scale Mount Everest and how that experience has changed his life forever. Dr. Chris Brower, a highly regarded and sought after world expert on technologies of the future and the digital revolution. A close friend of Ross and Brenda Tyson, this is a huge achieve, achievement to have him as a speaker at our district conference. And here to talk about Friday night, Jocelyn will uh, speak about Rotary's Got Talent. And let me just quickly switch over here. Go ahead, Joss. Okay. Okay, so um, after brainstorming for what we were going to do as a Friday night uh, entertainment, I'm really excited that we decided on Rotary's Got Talent. Initially, we had thought about getting a hypnotist, but we wanted something where Rotarians would be more excited about and um, when we would get a greater attendance. So really right now, it's in its infancy. We've just started planning. Um, what we'd like to do is get 
um, a nice big banner for um, District Governor Tracy Babrick's conference in Grand Prairie. And at the House of Friendship, we would have um, a registration table there for Rotary's Got Talent as well. Uh, right now, we're not able to promote it, but once we are able to promote it, uh, we'd like to use social media, as well as um, my, Jim and I go do the club visits from July 1st up until the conference. Whatever clubs we go and visit, we would really like to promote it. We're also looking at having um, high profile judges. We'd like to have three judges that would judge the competition. Um, there would be a first prize winner and uh, they would be able to donate that money towards whatever Rotary project is dear to their heart. Right now we have a couple irons in the fire I, I don't really want to give out names right now as to who we have in mind for judges, but it's looking pretty good. And um, we've also recruited, Jackie Hobel's going to help me uh, with this, and she's recruited uh, Terry and Mary Drader. They had Rotary Scott Talent for um, Terry's district conference in Drayton Valley. And so they have some experience and they have a bunch of files that they're digging up for me right now. So we're moving forward with it. It's gonna be a really, really fun evening and I'm anxious to promote it. Super. So that's our, our little presentation about the, uh, the committee structure and the speakers uh, and Rotary's Got Talent. Ellie, did you want to did you want to say something about the district conference? Uh, I don't think I have too much more to add. I had made some notes, but uh, I have to go over this and scrap out what you already uh, covered. Uh, the conference is only 14 months away and plans are well on the way, as you have seen. Uh, we're very grateful for the commitment from, the, from our Rotary Club for the donation to support our conference and make it one of the best in the history of our district. But of course, every district governor would like to have this same claim of, of fame. We have an amazing conference team, uh, as you have seen, and several of our e-club members have stepped forward to take on a role. Peter, Bryce, Tammy, Sharon, uh, Judy, and of course, Jim and Jocelyn, uh, very actively involved. Uh, various past district governors and members from various clubs, such as uh, district governor nominee designate. <laughs> she's already nominee. Yes, yeah, she's a nominee. Yeah, she's already yeah. nominee. We need to change that. Um, it, it'll be great. Um, during the Grand Prairie conference will be the first launch of our uh, promotion of the conference. And we hope that many of our members will be attending uh, the conference in Grand Prairie. And I think there's some plans with ECLAP idea that let's say Janet will not, won't be able to come to Grand Prairie. Perhaps we can show her on video when we're doing our promotion, we never know. But those are some of the things um, that uh, we've been thinking on. Um, Betty, uh, Betty uh, would have liked to be here tonight and uh, she was not able to. She's chairing um, hospitality and um, she said that we hope to be able to welcome many of the e-club members and share what will be an amazing conference. Uh, members of the e-club that are planning on coming to Edmonton in 2020 should contact Betty with their travel plans because she will make sure that you will get picked up from the airport. So that's hospitality. Um, Elizabeth Bonken and Gary Smith are looking for volunteers and uh, Sharon Blaker, who is our registration chair and uh, I, we're very, and, and uh, Sharon is just delighted that Donna will be working with um, Sharon on registration. 
and uh, Sharon and I have been in communication quite a bit the last few days as she's putting the registration form all together and it's uh, almost ready and we will be sharing that before our next uh, meeting in, uh, in August. So we're looking for volunteers that are going to Grand Prairie to be at the booth at the House of Friendship. Um, uh, sponsorships is co-chaired by Terry Demers and, and Frank uh, Wrights. And we will get actively involved in club sponsorships after we, um, after October 3rd, when we, when we are in Grand Prairie. But uh, we already have a start and we're already starting with some uh, corporate sponsors. Um, also, what you may want to know, there is an early bird uh, registration, which will be online October 3rd. And you will be able to take advantage of some nice discounts. And the first, I think it's the first 20 people that book a room at Doubletree will be upgraded to a, uh, to a suite. Tamara Larson, who is our district youth chair, is very excited to be on the team. And she will be able to um, connect us and, and we will have lots of opportunities to meet our young leaders. She also gives her regrets. She would have liked to be here, but she has uh, recommended that we spend a lot of time with our youth, which will be our future Rotarians. So we're not se uh, separating too much. Um, so if Grand Prairie is not in the cards, please mark your calendar for September 17, 19, 2020, because we would like to see as many members of the Rotary e Club of Canada one to be with us and share Rotary together. That was it for my part. Thank you very much, Ali and Jim and Jocelyn. So we have a few more minutes. Anybody, any more questions on things that haven't been addressed? I'm really, I'm really uh, looking forward to the fact that, yes, I'm going to try and be in, uh, in Edmonton in 2020 and that we are integrating the youth into the Rotary Conference completely. Because I think we all talk about, yes, we got to keep the youth, got to get the youth. So let's integrate them and let's host them and take care of them. And I think we underestimate the number of, or the interest that there is from the younger people into what we actually do. So um, anybody else, any comments or <clears throat> questions, please. I just have a quick update. I don't know if this is the place to, to uh, announce it or not, but uh, for, uh, for Jim, we, uh, we agreed with your emails there that I saw today, but on Thursday we went and shot everything at the hotel. Uh, oh. So all the B-roll and everything is all done. Um, the only thing we have to do is, is just do the walkthrough with you. I don't know why that lady needs to be there either for it. Cause the only thing we haven't gotten is the room shot, but otherwise uh, like, Time lapse. Oh, and then my other guy is coming in tomorrow to do the optometrist shoot for the more for that opening scene. So we should be done that tomorrow. So, oh, wow. so the the yeah. So really, all we got to do is just uh, have you and your script come in, and and we're we're done. Okay. So and that will I, be I, in the Reco Studio, right? That's in the Reco Studio. No, no, we're going to shoot all that on location. Oh, okay. Too yeah, bad. yeah. So we, we've, um, the, the, I think we could probably go and just, I think we could just shoot it. Somebody might ask us questions, but I sent her an email asking her why, like if there was somebody else I could talk to so we could get it done earlier and I haven't gotten a response yet. So I'm assuming she's on holidays, but I don't know why she wouldn't assign somebody to, to take her, you know, take her emails or whatever. And I just haven't heard anything back. So I, I really like, we're pretty much done other than just that, that, that one shot. So, uh, I just didn't want to prolong it any longer. Mm -hmm. um, Bryce, would I be yes. able to promote uh, Rotary's Got Talent on the promo video? Yes, and I apologize I didn't get back because I think you sent me that email last week and I was just heading out of, uh, off onto the road. 
but uh -huh. uh, yeah absolutely um we just want to just figure out how we want to like fit that in but i think that can just be one of the subcategories that jim uh, jim addresses when he's doing his uh his like announcement mm -hmm. and then we can put that like a graphic in of rotaries about talent that's very easy to insert so uh, yes to your question for sure okay Super. Thanks. Anybody else? I, Any... I'll touch base with you. Sorry. And I'll re return your email uh, to, like tonight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Um, I'll text you and uh, we'll figure out a day that we can get together. Yeah. And for Thank anybody you. who hasn't been to Bryce's studio, uh, that's really something. He's got a full-fledged studio built in uh, the basement of his new house. <clears throat> uh, Nelson Scott and I went there last week, I think it was. Yes. Phenomenal. Just incredible. He's got everything there. He can do everything in his, his basement. So it's just, uh, it's a work of art. And thank you very much, Jim. <laughs> one, <laughs> one other thing, while we were there, we lasered the, uh, the room, the, the conference center. So uh, my uh, 3D designer is going to start working on designs. So hopefully within a couple of weeks, I should have you some renders of what the room, what our vision is for the room for production wise with the screens. You know, if we, if we have the ability to put the LED wall in, we mapped out power as well. Uh, so we'll be able to really show you. <laughs> we'll, we'll be able to really show you what that whole thing is going to look like, look like very close to. Um, mm -hmm. we, we have a program called WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, and we design the whole thing. We add the tables, the chairs, uh, 3D map it, and you can do a tour of the room and, and the whole kit and caboodle with what everything's going to look like lighting-wise and stuff like that. So, yeah, like I said, in a couple of weeks, I think we should have a, uh, at least one or two versions of what we can do. We'll go for, like, the Cadillac of the events, you know, if, if budget, per, you know, budget, uh, permits and then we'll go like I said, we'll give you a step down um and then show you all what we're looking to sponsor so that we can really make this uh like a real oh wow event so perfect well we're really excited about it so um you know we've okay. got the right right guy on board too thank you all very much it's time to call this uh, get together to an end because people have just about empty glasses and need to go for a refill anyway, I can tell. Oh, that, that wine is bugging me, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ellie. Uh, Jim, oh, thanks. Jim, you just have to go to the bathroom probably. Well, Ellie said it was a fellow sip meeting. Best I can come up with is a cup of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Okay. That will change. Thank you all very much for coming. John Kay, thanks very sure. much for being here. And again, congratulations on your first Paul Harrow. Harris and uh, everybody else. Thank you so much, Donna. Glad you could make it, and yeah. Sorry, uh, look I forward was late. to meeting you more. And, uh, yeah. No, you never, you're never late when you show right. up. That's right. I and, hope that we see John K again every now and then. Oh yeah. yeah. You yeah. might. You might. <laughs> you All right. Our only American right now, and don't let that wall interfere. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go down to Mexico one time and you won't be able to get back. Uh, oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to Cuba. All right. And okay, everybody. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.